Counting Crows with Mr. Jones, Charles and Eddie, would I lie to you just ahead of that on your midday mix now? In studio with me, I have Lex Austin from All Hearts Foundation, a really incredible, incredible foundation doing some very, very important work here with our wildlife. Lex, welcome back to the studio. It has been a while. Thank you for having us, Dee. It's great to be back and it's great to be sitting here with you. Most definitely. So give us a bit of a breakdown because I think um, rehabilitating wildlife is quite a broad thing and you guys do a lot of work. It's not just the wolves that people might you know automatically put all hearts foundation with you guys do quite a few uh, different animals right there 100 percent. so we like to call ourselves all hearts foundation wolf and animal sanctuary that's mm-hmm. because obviously as everybody knows our key goals is to focus on public education around exotic wildlife and their well-being yeah. and then obviously all of our other furry friends and the people and community that need our assistance we lend a helping hand where we can as well and as you know in our country we've got a huge problem with the exotic trade with people mm. thinking it's okay to buy tigers wolves etc keep them at home as pets that's where we come in to offer the animals a great safe haven and then to educate the youth and public on what we do and why these animals are not pets i think people spend like a bit of time and they see these shows like uh, tiger king on, on netflix and they're like <laughs> these americans what are they doing without realizing that it actually is happening here in our backyard i 100%. mean uh, it, it's, it's quite a scary thing to 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 see how legislation and all of that is so far behind that actually allows people to deal in these exotic animals that you know really i think most of the time they don't realize what they're getting themselves into and once you've got it now what do you do you're sitting with these animals you're like well now what 100 percent, and it becomes a novelty and it becomes a status quo which is also the most upsetting part of it because these animals obviously need to be provided with great you know space to run enclosure space they shouldn't be kept in backyards they're not pets they can't be walked down your public streets they also are a safety risk and they do need to have stricter implementation to these animals so that they've got the rights that all of our indigenous species carry within this country do you think when when people purchase these kind of animals they are informed about you know what's going to be happening like you mentioned can't go into the backyard you can't take it for a walk it's it's quite a, a dangerous animal that has special maybe dietary needs and and especially enclosure things like that without sounding rude i do think that the general public is misinformed at Mm. times i do think they like to be naive but i just think all of us do hold common sense so to know that you're going to have a tiger cub or a wolf running around your garden as a a small little pup and then a couple of months later you've got nearly (laughs) a full-grown cat walking around your backyard you should know what you should be able to provide that animal with and with buying these animals comes a great cost so if you can afford an animal like that we always say then rather class yourself as an animal enthusiast and have the appropriate space and Mm. farm etc to keep these animals and obviously if they can't that's where we come in they make contact with us and then we do what we can to accommodate those animals and put them either within for example the wolves within a pack put them inside a very nice space where they provided with the five freedoms of animal welfare and just focus on enriching that animal's life to its best ability because captivity isn't you know ideal but yeah. it is there so why not provide a beautiful space for these animals 100 percent. i mean it can't be undone a lot of the time like that's once that ship has sailed it sailed 100 <laughs> percent. right um now obviously you guys do a lot of work uh, with, with these animals and i mean with the covid pandemic it's just really turned a lot of foundations um upside down and yours included yes where do you guys find yourself at at this current time so obviously for the general public that follows us um please you know do go follow our forums but basically we've ended up in crisis mode now where Mm. we've got less than five months to either raise 3.8 million rand which is what the owners want to sell the premises for (laughs) or we need to relocate relocation is not something that we are very much keen on doing of course it's an absolute last resort and the reason for that is our animals are set in their spaces the intent was never to relocate from the premises we were at now but we found ourselves in a very difficult legal battle with the landlords and sadly they did win um, the last court trial that we went to and the judgment that has been made against us now is that exactly we've got till april 2022 to either
either purchase the premises or vacate. So stress is very high. Um, yeah. You know, we kind of all over the, the show at the moment, not knowing where to go, who, who to turn on. And that's why, you know, we're blessed that you've had us here today so that we can just let the public know that we desperately need help and, and not Ronnie and myself, the animals. The yeah. animals are the ones. So we're asking anybody that can to potentially come and help rescue All Arts Foundation because nothing is impossible. We just need the correct backing, may it be investors, may it be sponsorship to come on board and assist yeah. us however they might want to. Now, obviously, April's not that far away um, no. and it's a stressful enough thing to, to run a foundation and keep everything running. But now with this on top of that, it's, I can imagine really adds to, you know, to the, to the stress and the worry about the animal's welfare. What now happens if we get to April and, and we don't reach a solution? Because, well, I mean, oftentimes you guys are like the last stop for these animals. And that's the problem. If we don't reach a solution, then by law, the sheriff and the police can come in and physically remove us. Um, you know, at that point, I'm not sure where the animals would even be relocated to because as it is, shelters and sanctuaries are closing down all over. Yeah. Nature conservation is inundated. And this kind of thing's really stalled us and kept us back from our future goals. You know, yes, COVID was hard and there's always ways to meet resolutions something we've tried time and time again with the landlord but if we didn't have to worry about legal battles and court expenses and all of the attorneys accounts etc then we would be pushing on to the greater things like we've been doing you know building for example we wanted to build a campsite so that we could get people to come and actually spend weekends out there do excursions with yeah. us volunteer work so it's really set us back immensely so to even think of where we would be, you know, in April 2022 20, and not having somewhere to go, I, I just want to cry when it's I talk about it because it's, it, I don't have the answers there. And that's yeah. why we desperately need people to help, you know, and it really isn't as easy as moving. We need about 500,000 Rand to rebuild our existing enclosures because in order to move the animals, you'll need to have enclosures up, nature conservation to come and improve and then start moving animals across. You'll have vet bulls, you'll have the animals going under major stress yeah you'll have all of us under stress then we need to get people to rebuild and as it is if i look out there at property i also don't believe too many people would want to back the idea of us renting again they would yeah. much rather know that we have bought a premises and we're settled 100 percent, and we're safe now in terms of fundraising i mean it's going to take quite a bit of fundraising to get to where you need to be in order to purchase this what have you guys been busy with um uh, up until this point in time so currently we've got a gofundme site up and running um you just put in all arts foundation you'll find the crowdfunding um campaign there then we've also got back a buddy going we've been reaching out to sponsors obviously to radio hosts like yourself yeah and just trying to spread awareness um we are section 18a registered so anybody that that would like to potentially donate um, can also, you know, request a Section 18A certificate that goes for your individual capacity and also um, in your company's capacity. Yeah. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we will be in the Citizen newspaper as well. So we're really trying to get it up with the media just so that, you know, public know where we're at. And be visible because I think there are a lot of people out there who really do want to help. They might not be able to do like thousands and thousands of rands, but they do want to help for a cause that they believe in. And I mean, I think anyone who's met um, you, you and Ronnie know that this is something that you live for you live and breathe for the animals yes. and you don't want to put them in through any undue stress I mean anyone who's I think ever moved home and you've had to move some domestic cats or your dogs you know it's a stressful yeah. situation now put yourself in the position of having to do that to, to wolves and all the other you know non-domesticated animals that Correct. are there um, I, I can only imagine it's going to be an absolute challenge. So how do we get in contact with you if we're a private person, if we're a company, if we want to, you know, uh, help you with this really valid cause that you guys have going at the moment? So I'm going to revert everybody to the website because that's the easiest way to get yeah. hold of us directly. It is www.allheartsfoundation.co.za and everything is there. Contact details. You can donate via the website. Um, it can link you to all of our social media forums and we're asking everyone you know a lot of people don't like to just donate 10 rand yeah that 10 rand goes a long way for sure um, especially when there's a lot of people doing it and that's the thing and we try and encourage people because 10 bucks i promise you we've got six thousand followers that's sixty thousand rand a month yeah. if we could get that going on a frequent basis it really makes the world of a difference if you can't donate anything share our post network the stuff for us because there might be somebody out there that can help most definitely. I think a lot of people often underestimate the power of a share. 
hundred percent. And uh, a lot of the time, there are people out there who have the intention to help and they have the ability to help, but they might just not hear it. And you could be that person who puts one and one together and we've got a solution. 100%. So it's something we encourage. Everybody serves a purpose. And at the end of the day, we do what we do for the animals because they don't have a voice. So we need to be that voice for them. 100%. Can we get that uh, uh, website one more time, please? Yes. The website is www.allheartsfoundation.co.za. Thank you two for coming through. We really do appreciate it. Oh, and I really you. hope you guys get inundated. I hope that inbox fills up and um, you reach the goal. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, this is for the animals. We want to create a safe space for them. These are animals who haven't chosen their, their situation. But the best thing that you can do is help them be in a situation where they are properly cared for, properly looked after, and they're happy. You and to that. educate. Educate is so important because then we can stop this worldwide problem that we're dealing with. And, you know, Damien, we just want to say to you as well, thank you so much because you've watched us from the start. Yeah. You helped us go from small to big. And our goal is to grow bigger and to be able to help more animals and to keep the fight up. So... I want to thank you so much from All Arts Foundation. It's my absolute pleasure, man. Like, I, I really believe in you guys, and I think there is a solution that's coming. We just haven't found it just yet. Um, so please, please help out with uh, the All Hearts Foundation. Um, you can find them online. Uh, Lex, I did have one more question. Yes. Uh, in terms of um, tours, are you guys doing tours or anything like 100%, that? 100% we're doing tours. People can also get in touch via the website and book. Um, and it's really a nice day out to come and meet the animals, mm. learn their stories, and physically see firsthand what we're doing it really sure. changes your perception when you get to see it firsthand most definitely i think then you can also see what goes into you know the caring of these animals Correct, all of the work guys thank you so much thank you safe travels and I, I, like i said i hope you guys get absolutely inundated with with help we we need to make this happen all hearts foundation if you can't help share subscribe spread the news guys thank, thank you. you so much thank you